As we start the month of May and summer approaches in the northern hemisphere, many capital market participants start thinking ahead to summer holidays, and you begin to hear the phrase "sell in May and go away" being uttered on trading floors across investment banks around the world. So, what exactly does "sell in May and go away" entail, and is there any reason to heed that advice? I'm Andrew Liu, Vice President of Capital Markets here at CFI. And in this week's deeper dive, let's look a bit deeper into this phenomenon. Sell in May and go away is a well-known adage in the financial world, which suggests that investors should sell their stocks in May and buy them back later in the year. This strategy is based on the historical trend that stock markets tend to underperform during the summer months, typically between May and September. While returns in the fall and winter tend to be higher, as a matter of fact, this term has been used for many decades, originating in London's financial district among the stockbrokers and bankers. The original phrase was "sell in May and go away, come back on St. Ledger's Day," a horse race held in Doncaster dating back to the 1700s. That's held in September of every year. In the U.S., traders have adopted a similar strategy that spans the time between Memorial Day in May and Labor Day in September. So let's talk about why traders on both sides of the Atlantic believe this phenomenon to be true. The first and most often quoted theory is that with summer holidays in many parts of the world, both buy-side investors and sell-side traders take their well-deserved breaks to be with their families. Resulting in less market liquidity and overall lower trading activity. That certainly holds true from an eye test. On this refinitive chart, we're looking at the daily traded volume for all U.S. equity market exchange traded instruments, which are mostly stocks. Without fail, the lowest volumes always happen in the summer. However, as the market moves to more program trading, called algorithmic or algo trading for short, the fact is that traders and fund managers being in the office may not be as important as it once was. You can see that the volumes may drop in the summers, but over the last few years, the low points called valleys are getting higher and higher. Another theory is that companies may be less active in terms of news announcements and other reports over the summer months, which also means less volatility. However, a quick check of the VIX index by the CBOE, a major leading indicator of market volatility, doesn't seem to indicate much seasonality. In thinking about it logically, companies announce quarterly earnings throughout the summer, so there really shouldn't be much of a difference. However, Notwithstanding these two theories, since 1945, the S&P and its predecessor index posted a cumulative six-month average gain of 6.7 percent in the period between November to April, compared to an average gain of only around 2 percent between May and October. The S&P 500 also only typically generates positive returns, roughly two-thirds of the time from May to October, while that percentage rises. To 77 percent from the period from November to April. Does this mean investors should blindly follow this old adage? Well, we think it's perhaps better not to think of this phenomenon as a fixed rule, but a trend that tends to happen over the summer months. In 2023, blindly following this trend might be even more dangerous than most, given the numerous potential risk factors that exist this year. In potentially negative market themes, we continue to have the geopolitical overhang from the Russian-Ukraine war, as well as the regional banking crisis that's slowly unraveling in America. Whether it's an issue such as duration mismatching, like we saw at SVB, illiquid lending to crypto-based businesses, like we saw at Signature Bank, and liquidity concerns, like we saw at First Republic just this past week, it seems so far that the FDIC. And the U.S. government have been able to control the fallout. Now there are also positive global market themes as well, namely the potential slowing down of Fed rate hikes, as the Fed and other global central banks seem to be gaining an upper hand in their inflation fight. There are also some pleasant surprises in global earnings for many companies, such as Apple's recent announcement last week on strong iPhone sales, as well as potential market-moving announcements coming from Amazon. Alphabet, 
and J.P. Morgan Chase, who rescued the aforementioned First Republic Bank. So what should you do? An investment strategy always starts with the risk tolerance and time horizon considerations. If you are able to weather some potential volatility and have a longer term investment horizon, then perhaps the smarter play is to just simply stay invested. As Market Beat on Nasdaq.com recently wrote, sell in May is an exercise in market timing. And if selling on a certain month is all it takes to be successful, why wouldn't everyone simply just do it? Now, if you're being paid to actively trade and you're interested in learning about how the beliefs of large amounts of investors might turn things into reality, I would highly recommend you look at CFI's course on behavioral finance, which talks about the psychology that drives capital markets. If you're interested in furthering your trading skills, we also have specialized courses, such as our new Equity Trading Fundamentals course, which offers a hands-on simulation component as well. I hope you found this episode of CFI's Deeper Dive interesting and informative. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you on the next CFI Deeper Dive.